Christ United Methodist Church, we're so glad to see you today. It's a beautiful Sunday morning to gather together. Um, we have a lot going on in the life of the church this week. I want to turn your attention to the bulletin. If you'll look, uh, we have an upcoming anniversary for Tim and Sue Holland. We thank them for the flowers on the altar. And uh, A. Debbie and Diane McDonald have a new great-granddaughter. We're so excited to welcome Ella Knight. She was born this week, so congratulations to y'all, and we pray for many blessings on a long, happy life for Ella. Our red bags that we fill for Common Ground, and we bring the first Sunday of the month, are available in the Northex. Common Ground is very, very appreciative of all that we donate. We are one of the largest donators to their food pantry, so please continue to give. Um, if you see in the bulletin, they have some special requests this month that they're asking for, um, hygiene items and such. And, um, of course, now that summer is approaching, any food items for the kids that will be home during the summer will be greatly appreciated. There is a meeting this week for the Higher Education and Scholarship Committee. Uh, please take note tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the conference room. And the Satyrs. While Beverly is undergoing her treatment at MD Anderson, you'll see an address in the bulletin for them to send cards of encouragement. Um, and there are even pre-printed address labels in the office if you'd like to send them. Uh, she came home. She didn't stay? She didn't have to stay at all? Uh, well, okay, well that's good news. Until then. Okay, good news. Thank you for the update. Um, Christ UMC will now be a polling place for the election, so just be aware on Saturday we will be open for the voters. And there is a hat decorating party next Sunday that is available to all the ladies. It is a bring your own hat, BYOH, or there will be some available. Uh, light lunch will be served, so please, there's a sign up sheet in the North X if you think you would like to be here. Just let us know so we'll know how many to plan for. Uh, and the CSA trip coming up will be going to the Patricia Huffman Smith Museum in Hip Hill, Texas, uh, May 9th. So if you would like to be a part of that, there's information here in the bulletin as well. Any announcements that you would like to bring forth at this time? If you would like to make any donations towards the uh, recovery effort in Ruston from the tornadoes, uh, just to make a memo in your check when you put it in the offering plate today, Ruston, and uh, that money will be sent to those efforts. <laughs> All right, well, as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today, we are reminded that Jesus says, uh, wherever two or three are gathered, there I will be also. So with that acknowledgement, we say, come, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our hymn of praise this morning, Easter people, raise your voices.
remain standing as we affirm our faith by reciting the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Seated. Will the children please come forward at this time for our children's moment with Miss Michelle? Good morning, Tamina. Okay, so I'm going to show you a card trick this morning. Have you ever seen a card trick before? You have? Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do the cards like this, and you're going to tell me when to stop, and without looking at it, I'm going to be able to tell you what the card is. You think I can do that? You think I can do that without looking, tell you what the card is? You do. Okay, well, I'm going to mix them up, just so you'll know that I'm mixing them up, and that I'm not cheating. All right, so... All right, so I'm going to do this, and you tell me when to stop, and I'm going to tell you what the card is going to say. Tell me when to stop. So this one right here is the eight of hearts, okay? All right? Is that right? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to do it again. Okay. <laughs> Mixing them up. Okay. So it's not a, not a scam. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, now. So tell me when to stop. This one right here, the ace, that's an A of hearts. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So did you really think that I could do that? So you believed in me, right? You believed that I could do that. Okay, well, our Bible story today is about um, Jesus. You know, he rose from the dead last Sunday, right? Easter Sunday. And then later he appeared to his disciples. And they were shocked to see him because, you know, he died on the cross and then he rose from the dead. And he showed them the places in his arm where he was crucified. And they were so excited that Jesus was alive. So they ran and told their friend Thomas. They were like, Thomas, Jesus is alive. But Thomas didn't believe him. Didn't believe them. He said he had to see it for himself to, to know it was true. So Jesus went to Thomas. And when Thomas saw him, he finally believed. But Thomas had to see it to believe it. Right? So um, Jesus calls us to believe in him. We can't see Jesus every day, can we? We can't, he's not like walking around like he appeared to the disciples, but we just know he's there, right? Because we have faith. That's the word. Faith means that we believe in Jesus, okay? So can you remember that? Even though we can't see him, that we, we know he's there. Okay, so let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Tamina and for all the children in the world. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day and for appearing to the disciples that day. Please help us to have faith, strong faith to know that you are there, even though we can't see you every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay.
Let's go to Children's Church. Amen. Um, now is the time where we turn our hearts to prayer. Are there any concerns you would like to lift up at this time? I know that Jim and Jackie Moore are on the prayer links, and some people may not know that uh, I think Jackie had had some heart surgery, and Jim <laughs> Bell and Messy showed her up, so they're in need of prayer. And, uh, we ordered a prayer for them. So next Sunday, if you go by and Prayer quilt for them, please. True. Uh, prayer quilt for Jim and Jackie. They could use some prayers at this time as they both recover. Any other concerns? Uh, just keep my daughter and my Jim and Dixon in your prayers. She's undergoing chemo from MD Anderson. It's here, but they send it. Sure. If she goes through cancer treatment, we'll keep her in our prayers. Yes? Prayers for her nephew as he goes through treatment for cystic fibrosis. He'll be traveling to Denver for his treatments. Yes, and their father. Surgery for cancer on Tuesday, her daughter-in-law. Okay, Lord, hear our prayers. Any others? Um, a good friend of mine passed away Easter Sunday. He was a long-time staff member at Louisiana Tech's library, Prescott Library, and uh, we had this funeral Friday. It was incredibly beautiful. But if you were a student at Tech, please pray for the Prescott Library staff. Uh, they lost one of their own Sunday. And it was, it was a, a post-surgical infection. Complications. <laughs> For sure. And I want to turn your attention also to our bulletin where we have our list of those on our prayer list, those in our church, those in our community, and just loved ones um, of, our, of our own. So remember them also as you do your daily prayer time. Any joys? I see we have an anniversary coming up for Tim and Sue. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? It was such a beautiful time of year. Nobody was getting married at this time. <laughs> All right, well, let's turn our hearts to prayer. Oh, do we have one over here? No? Okay. Let's turn our hearts to prayer. Father God, we thank you for the privilege and the freedom to gather uh, together as a church family to openly praise your name, to thank you for your presence in our lives, and to thank you for the resurrection power. As we finish up the celebration of Easter Sunday, Lord, may we remember in the hymn we just sang that every day is Easter Sunday. The battle you've won, the triumph that you've already conquered, Lord, we, we thank you for what it means in our lives. The life here on this earth is not final. Lord, you have graciously provided a place for us to live with you forever in heaven. We thank you for eternal life and we thank you for the abundant life that begins the day we accept you into our hearts. Father, where there is fear, where there is discord, we pray for your spirit of peace to be among them. Where there is sickness and where there is disease, Lord, we pray for your spirit of healing to touch them. Father, wherever you are needed most, the concerns in our hearts that we don't even speak to those around us, Lord. We pray for your presence. We pray for your Holy Spirit to bring comfort. Where there is unforgiveness, Lord, bring your grace. Father, we repent for the times where we have failed from loving you wholly with our full hearts. 
where we have failed to be obedient to your word, to even love those under our own roof, much less the neighbors outside. We thank you for the time to come before you and to lay that at the foot of the cross and that each day is a new day. Father, we thank you for loving us even when we are least deserving of your love. We thank you for your grace and your forgiveness that you shower upon us. May we continue to love others in that same way. Now we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts. I'll be in chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Again, that's Acts 5, verses 27 through 32. The apostles meet opposition. Then they brought the apostles before the high council, where the high priest confronted them. We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name, he said. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him, and you want to make us responsible for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on the cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as Prince and Savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey Him. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would our ushers please come forward at this time? Please bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, as we come now to give you our tithes and our offering above those tithes, may we be ever mindful that it is your work we're doing on this land. Lord, may we continue to build your kingdom here on this earth. May everything we do honor and glorify your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Oh! 
Please remain standing and join me in the hymn of witness, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Bibles to John chapter 20. We'll be reading from verses 19 through 31. John 20, 19 through 31. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgive them. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace 
be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you would continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in Him you will have life by the power of His name. The Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds, may they be truly and utterly faithful to Your Word, O Lord, Lord our God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. And we pray this morning that You would stand in our midst, that You would breathe life over us, that You would help us to see the love that You have for us by Your wounds, and that You would help us to believe and receive You in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Are there any of you out there confused? Are you going, the pollen's gotten to Mark's head so much he doesn't even know what day it is? Uh, that, that was last week, Pastor. Don't you realize that Easter was a week ago? Well, did you know that Easter's really 50 days? That it's not just one day. It's a season where we celebrate uh, the risen Christ where we celebrate that the tomb is empty, that, that Christ is risen and, and the joy that comes from knowing that He is risen from the grave and the joy that, that, that we know that Christ is living and, and, and breathing and is with us. And, and it was a time for the early church to, to uh, help teach how to live out a life of discipleship, how to be a follower of Jesus Christ as we prepare for Pentecost. Uh, when the Holy Spirit comes uh, in 50 days. And, and so one of the things that I would like you to do uh, is to read one chapter of Acts every single day until Pentecost. Just read one chapter of Acts. And, and if, if you kind of are simple like me, you can do it an easy way. You can start on May 1st and read the first chapter of Acts. And on May 2nd, you would read... That's very good. Y'all are so good. Y'all, 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 or you could start today if you wanted and, and didn't do it that way. But then when you get finished with the 28th verse, you can either skip a couple of days and then start back on the 1st of June, or you can just go keep reading uh, for uh, one chapter of Acts a uh, day. I, I once knew a minister who, who did that every single day for five years, read one chapter of Acts to, to see how the Holy Spirit moved and to see how the disciples uh, lived out their life and their calling uh, uh, of life after Jesus had ascended uh, to heaven. And, and so that, y'all can all handle one chapter a day, right? Most of y'all read the whole Bible uh, last year, so you ought to be able to do uh, one. But uh, you know, so so kind of do that for for the next fifty days, or if you want to continue that for the rest of the year or the rest of your life, however you're feeling moved uh, with that. But I want you to think right now. I want you to think what was the most outlandish story that you'd ever heard. Well, what, what was it that was the craziest story, that, that there was the most unbelievable story? What, what would be that, uh, that story? And, and, and what did it take for you to believe that story? Or, or maybe, why didn't you believe that story? What, what was it that caused you to believe or not believe in that uh, incredible story that, that someone uh, shared with you? Well, 
the disciples had just heard probably one of the most unbelievable stories in the history of the world. Uh, uh, one, probably one of the hardest things to believe. I mean, they had just experienced uh, their leader, uh, the, who they thought was the Messiah, uh, to be uh, captured and, and, and by the Romans and, and, and crucified. And, and most of them scattered uh, because they were so worried about their life or whatever the reason that they made them scatter. Most of them ran away. Uh, and and uh, Jesus died and, and they put Him in a tomb. And, and, and three days later, the, the women went to go visit the tomb. And th that was this morning. Uh, the story takes place on Resurrection Day when the tomb was empty. Uh, that, that morning, the women had gone to the tomb and, and they had seen the stone rolled away and, and the body was gone. And, and, and they came and they told us that, that Jesus was alive, that they had seen the Lord. And, and here they are gathered together that night, that, that, that Resurrection Day, that Resurrection Night, that Easter night. They were all gathered together in one room and, and they had the doors locked because they were scared their life. Uh, might be taken. They, they thought maybe they too would be put in jail. So they had those doors locked. The disciples were there gathered around. They were frightened. They were scared. They had heard this story that Jesus was alive. But, uh, they didn't know what to think. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jesus was there. He, he just showed up. He, he just appeared. How in the world could Jesus come in uh, with the doors locked? But there He was. Jesus was there. And He looks at His disciples uh, and He says... Peace, peace be with you. And he says, look at, at the wounds in my hands and, and my feet and, and see the wound on my side and, and believe, believe uh, in me and, and, and believe in, in, in what is going on. Uh, and uh, the, he, he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus says to the disciples uh, there. And, uh, and, and this, this is a story of one of the, the times that we see Jesus' resurrected body. It, it's a different body than, than what happened before uh, He died. It's a, a different kind of body. But, but every Sunday when we say the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. The, the Greek people believed the body was evil and, and should be destroyed uh, upon death. But, but as Christians, we believe that we one day will have a resurrected body, newer and different and, and more incredible than we could ever imagine. And, and here's just an example of, of Jesus in that resurrected body and, and, and what that means. And, and so there, the disciples were all gathered together. Jesus comes in. He, 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 he tells them to have peace. Uh, a word that probably all of us probably need to hear uh, many, many times a day, many, many different times in our life when we're struggling, when we're hurting, when, when life seems to have gotten out of control. We need Jesus to come to us and, and just, just speak to us and say, have my peace. Have my life. Have, have the fullness that I offer uh, from, from my resurrection. Uh, receive that joy that comes from knowing that I'm not dead, that I'm alive again. And, and the disciples there received that. And Jesus blew the Holy Spirit upon them. And they received that word. Receive that into their presence. Now imagine, now imagine if you were Thomas. It, it doesn't tell us why Thomas wasn't there with the disciples. Maybe Thomas was so scared that he had run as far away as he possibly could to get away from, from all the chaos of the, the crucifixion. Who knows why he went there. Maybe he went to a party the night before and, and was so sleepy he couldn't get up that morning to, to, to go. Or he, you know, maybe they locked the door before he got... We don't know why Thomas wasn't... But can you imagine being Thomas? And the disciples going, you won't believe what just happened. You won't believe it, Thomas. We were all there. We were gathered. The door was locked. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, oh, Jesus, the Lord was there. And, and he, he showed us the wounds on His hands and His feet and His side. And, and He said, peace. And He breathed the Holy Spirit over us. And, and we received that peace. And then He said, I'm going to send you out to, to do My work. I mean, do you blame Thomas for not believing what the disciples... I mean, I would have said, well, I'm not believing it until I see it myself. 
Uh, but I bet you I would have never left the rest of those disciples' side until I did. <laughs> I would have done everything I could. Man, tonight's the night. Jesus is coming tonight. But, but eight days later, eight days later, uh, the disciples were back in the, same, in the same place. And guess what? The doors were wide open. All the windows, they were enjoying all the weather, right? No, the doors were locked again. They were still not quite there yet. Uh, and all of a sudden, just like before, out of nowhere, there was Jesus standing. Uh, and, and what did He do for Thomas? I mean, He looks right at Thomas, right as He gets in there, and He says, Thomas, come touch my hands. Come touch my feet. Put your hand in my side. Uh, I believe. Do what you need to believe in Me. Did Thomas do any of those things that he said he needed? He immediately believed by just seeing, by just being there, by being in God's presence. I would have probably jumped up and said, well, let me see. I've mean, I, I, I got to see for myself. I've got to feel it. Is that really you? I, I would have had to put my arms around him and say, really? Is that you? But what, what would have taken you to believe in the resurrected Christ. Here we are 2,000 years uh, in, in the future and, and we gather here today to celebrate the resurrected Christ. That, that we believe in the One who came to die for our sins. That we have that joy of life uh, and, 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 and we have that, that, that peace that Paul describes as the peace that passes all understanding because we know that God loves us and, and cares for us and, and, and died for us uh, and He rose for us. And then the, was given the Holy Spirit so that we could have that life. And that through believing that we would receive that life. Now Thomas, he gets a bad rap for the most part. You know, they call him Doubting Thomas. But, I mean, he's no different than any of the rest of us. Every single one of us out there, and, and me included, have had doubts about our faith, about where in the world life is, is, is sending us, uh, uh, about, well, is God real? Is, is, is God really alive? Uh, is, is this true? I mean, every single one of us have had those doubts. And, and, and one of my favorite authors is, is Frederick Binkner, and, and he says this about doubts. He says, whether your faith is that there is a God, or that your faith is that there is not a God, if you don't have any doubts, you are either kidding yourself or you're asleep. Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it awake and moving. It, isn't that a lovely thought? Doubt is the ants in the pants of faith. Have any of y'all ever gotten ants in your pants? <laughs> what do you do when you get ants in your pants? You get up and you get moving and you get to that water and get people to get it off. You, you do everything you can. And that's what doubts are there for. They're there to help increase our faith, to get our faith moving, to, to get us to seek out God and to ask God, God, I need You. I need You to show me those wounds in Your hands so that I can have faith. God, I need You to show me Your presence here as I'm going through this storm of life. God, I don't see You. Where are You? God, help me through this circumstance. God, I have no clue what's happening in this world today and I don't even know if You're there. God, show me that You're there with me. And if you ask God to show you you, he's going to do just like he did for Thomas and say, here you go. Come see. What do you need to believe that I'm alive? What do you need to believe that you're a loved child of God? What do you need to not have doubts, to have that peace that passes all understanding? What do you need to believe so that you can know that God loves you and cares for you and is helping you through whatever circumstance you are going through? What is it that you need at this point in life so that God can raise you from the dead of life so that you can believe and have life? What is it that you need so that you can sell Celebrate the joy of Easter this season. What is it that you need? 
Ask God and allow God to show you whatever it is that you need. Or, or maybe, maybe you're out there and you've never believed. Maybe you've just kind of gone to church your whole life and, and, and it's just something that you always did, but and, well, you're, maybe, maybe this is real, maybe it's not. Ask God to show up in your midst right now and show you the wounds on His hands and His feet. Ask God to meet you face to face. Ask God to breathe the Holy Spirit into your life to bring you peace. Ask God to come into your heart and experience the joy of the resurrection. Ask God to show you the tomb is empty. Ask God to show you that this life doesn't end. Ask God to show you whatever you are doubting and allow those ants just to make you run as fast as you can into God's Word, into God's arms, and into God's presence today. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. He's asking you to believe in Him today. How is your belief on this Easter morning? May you have the joy and the peace and the excitement of resurrected day. If you have doubts, may Christ put His hand upon your heart right now and reveal Himself to you. If you have fears, may you allow God's presence to remove those fears from your life. Jesus is asking us to believe in me today. And by believing, we will have life. Life today and life eternal. And that resurrected life that we expectantly hope for and know without a doubt that we will have. Let us pray. Loving God, we... Thank You for the doubts that we have in our life. We thank You that You're always seeking us out. And that Your love never ever ends. And on this Easter morning, as we celebrate the tomb is empty, and as we journey towards the ascension, may we see You face to face. May we see and experience the joy of Your resurrection. May You breathe out Your Holy Spirit over each and every one of us here. And may we receive that peace. Help us to receive that peace right now. And if there's anyone here today, Lord, who doesn't believe that You are alive, who's doubting their faith, who's experiencing hardship or feels lost or alone or feels like there is no hope. May the joy of the resurrection just fill their hearts, their souls, their minds right now. May the light of Your presence just beam into their hearts right now. May You break every bond and every chain that keeps them from knowing You. May they receive the forgiveness that comes from the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And may they arise from this place resurrected with You in new life, in new hope, in a new experience of You. And as You send us into the world, may we live that joy out to everyone we come in contact with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During the singing of our final hymn, we open the altar for you to pray. Um, if you would like me to pray with you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'm just going to let you pray at the altar by yourself. Uh, maybe this morning you heard the good news that God loves you and cares for you and has risen from the dead. And, and you want to uh, ask Him to be your Lord and Savior and follow that journey uh, of Him in your life and in the presence of
of God all the days of your life and that you will receive that resurrection today and when we die, then you're invited to come down and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You may have been visiting this church for a while. You'd like to become part of this church family. There's a card in your pew rack. You can fill that out. Bring that down with you during the last hymn and um, become part of this church family. If you have questions about how do you join the church or what that means, or if you'd just like to sit down with me and talk uh, about the church, uh, I'd love to sit down with anybody. Just call me during the week and we'll uh, uh, sit down and, and talk about uh, whatever it is. Um, however God is inviting you to respond, we pray that you will. But let's all stand together and sing our final hymn. so great to celebrate the risen Christ with you this uh, beautiful morning. If you're visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Mark, one of the pastors here. Uh, if you have any questions about the church, I'd love to uh, talk to you about that in any way. Um, hope that you will come back and we'll, we'll see you again as we uh, continue to uh, uh, celebrate and experience the joy of Easter. But let us go now into the world. Receiving the peace of the Holy Spirit, celebrating the joy of the resurrection, and going into the world to declare that Christ is alive and that we are His. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we go. Amen. Amen.